Now let's move on to grading. It's very important to grade aortic stenosis because we already know the measurements when it's normal. But what does a severe stenosis actually mean? Well, in case of a mild aortic stenosis, the aortic valve area is larger than 1.5 square centimeters. The mean pressure gradient, you will calculate that with the continuous wave Doppler signal, is below 20 millimeters of mercury, and the maximum velocity is in between 2.5 to 2.9 meters per second. If you continue to a moderate stenosis, the aortic valve area measured with the VTI is 1.5 to 1.1 square centimeters. The mean pressure gradient is in the range of 20 to 39 millimeters of mercury. The maximal velocity 3 to 3.9 meters per second. And now I want to mention also the aortic valve index, because if you have slim, or small or hectic patients, you can or you should index the aortic valve area. And if you index it with 0.61 to 0.85, it's a moderate stenosis. And furthermore, the dimensionless index should be mentioned, especially in the case of a severe stenosis. In a severe stenosis, if you cannot measure the LVOT properly, because sometimes that simply happens, the LVOT is sometimes very hard to measure. And if you have bad image quality, reduced image quality, maybe you cannot measure it accurately. Always keep in mind that a dimensionless index helps because you simply calculate the LVOT VTI divided by the aortic valve VTI and the ratio below or equal to 0.25 points towards a severe aortic stenosis. The aortic valve area is below or one square centimeter. The mean pressure gradient is above or 40 millimeters of mercury. And also the maximal velocity is above or four meters per second. Indexed, it would be below 0.6 square centimeters per square meter body surface area. Then there's another term, a critical aortic stenosis. In a critical aortic stenosis, you have an aortic valve area below 0.6 square meters. And this is now very important. You have a mean pressure gradient, and not the peak gradient, but the mean pressure gradient of even above 60 millimeters of mercury. The maximum velocity will be above 5 meters per second. The aortic valve area indexed is also below or equal to 0.4 square centimeters per square meter, and the dimensionless index is even below 0.2. There's another pitfall I want to point out, and I mentioned it already, it's the poor image quality. In aortic stenosis or with any kind of, of valvular pathology, you need to have a really full signal. So the entire signal has to have a nice bright spectrum. If that is missing or lacking, the signal is incomplete, even though now here it is a very high velocity, but still the signal is relatively weak. So that's not optimal. If you have such a signal and you can also hear that, that it's, it's not that full, you have to measure again or find a better angulation. Here you also see an incomplete and underestimated signal. Moving on to the pulse wave Doppler. The pulse wave Doppler is the second Doppler we need for aortic stenosis. We need it directly placed in the LVOT. Optimally, it is placed where you measure the LVOT, which is very often very difficult. So keep in mind that there is also a certain degree of error in this kind of measurement, simply because you sometimes are a little bit off. How can you optimally place the pulse wave Doppler? Well, place it first in the aortic valve, so in the middle of the stenosis, because then you have a lot of aliasing in the signal, and then move the box, so the pulse wave Doppler measures the velocities in the box, simply back until you do not hear the aortic stenosis anymore. So it's a see and listen. So listen to the signal, and when the signal has this darker area below, and it looks like this, that's probably the correct LVOT is so always place the pulse wave Doppler first in the center of the stenosis. Then you hear this, <laughs> the liasing and this, this very, very loud signal. And then it goes back to the LVOT and you hear a distinctly different signal. Also use ECG guidance for the continuous wave Doppler for the LVOT diameter and also for the pulse wave Doppler. And as mentioned, as close as possible you should measure towards the aortic valve, but really in the LVOT. And you should trace everything from and to the baseline, it's like the continuous wave Doppler signal as well. Now, let's discuss the continuity equation and what we actually found in this patient. 
For the continuity equation, we need the VTI, so the area under the curve of the signal. So this is the aortic valve signal. The area here is 150.64 centimeters, and this has to be put in this formula. So this is the formula of the aortic valve area, the continuity equation where you need the cross-sectional area of the LVOT, seen measured over here, the VTI of the LVOT divided by the VTI of the aortic valve. So here is the VTI of the LVOT and here is the VTI of the aortic valve. And when you calculate that, you see that this is truly a severe aortic stenosis because the measurement shows that the aortic valve area is 0.52 square centimeters. So a very, very small area is left where actually blood flow happens. So this is truly severe, even critical aortic stenosis. Furthermore, you can index it is 0.35 approximately square centimeters per square meter body surface area. And if you look at the maximum velocity, it's above six meters. It's 6.21 meters per second. And also, if you look at the mean pressure gradient, it's an enormous, a huge number. It's 106 millimeters of mercury. We go back and we remember that a uh, severe aortic stenosis begins at a mean pressure gradient of above 40 millimeters of mercury or 40 millimeters of mercury. So this is truly a very high gradient. So in this case, as mentioned, a severe or even critical aortic stenosis with a maximum velocity of 6.2 meters per second, the aortic valve area is 0.52 square centimeters. Indexed, it is 0.35 square centimeters per square meter. Its body surface area indexed in small and slim patients. She was not hectic, but she was very slim. The mean pressure gradient, so not the maximal gradient, was 106 millimeters of mercury. And this additional information, the dimensionless index, was also truly severely reduced with 0.14, where the true severe stenosis starts at 0.25.